Quite often what you're looking to get somebody to do is you're asking them to change. And everybody hates change. So getting people to change is always going to be pretty difficult. In fact, ask yourself right now, would you like to be more successful this year than you've ever been in your whole entire life? And I think I know the answer. I think it's yes. But do you already know of tens of things that you could be doing that would make you more successful? Then why aren't you doing them? And the reason that people aren't doing the things that they should be doing to get the thing that they say that they want is probably just because they're comfortable. And I'm pretty sure that you are kind of comfortable where you're at right now. So to make a change in you, or in turn to make a change in others, to get them to do the thing that you'd like them to do, you gotta get them over that hump. Getting people to change, and getting people to change is tough. I have a three-stage questioning technique. Now you can use it to get just about anybody to do just about anything. But I need you to promise that you're not gonna use it for any malicious gain. The basis of this three-stage questioning technique all comes down to one key word, a word that's massively overused in business. You'll know the word, you've probably used it yourself. It's the word motivation. So often people use the word still with no idea of its true meaning. The word splits, the first part of the word, the motive part, comes from the Latin word motivus. Modern day translation is the word motive. The Asian part comes from the word that we know as action. Motive, action, another word for motive would be the word reason. Another word for action would be to move or to do. So all that is meant by the word motivation is a reason to move. And would it be fair to say that if the reason was big enough, you could get just about anybody to do just about anything? And that is the premise of how this questioning technique works. People hate change. People do not move to become more comfortable, but people always move when they're comfortable. In fact, the more contrast you can ever show somebody between where they are, where they want to be, and where they don't want to be, the bigger the difference between those two places, the more easy it is to get somebody to change. Three stage questioning technique phase one. Do you believe that this time next year you'll be in a better situation than the one you're in today? Now I think that's probably a yes. Everybody else thinks the same thing too. Use that to your advantage. Ask people a plan-based question, a plan-based question about their future and where they want to be. When you ask somebody a plan-based question about their future, what they'll start to do is to open up about a good news story at some point in time onwards from now. As they explain that place, ask them a few more questions. Probe around a little and get them to explain it so clearly that you see it. Once you can see it based on their explanation, how well do they see it? And chances are that's a pretty happy place. That happy place is something they think favorably upon, and when they're thinking about a happy place, they're more likely to make a change. Leads to the second part of this questioning technique. We all know that people make decisions first on emotion over logic. People make decisions on what feels right, never what makes sense. So we need to evoke some feeling in them. And all we're gonna do is ask them their feelings. And when we ask their feelings, based on the place where they're at, then they should start to be able to reach for some describing adjectives, some words that explain how they feel at that moment. And you know when somebody says they'd feel proud, they experience pride. When somebody says they'd feel joy, they get joy. And when somebody says that they'd be really, really happy, you cannot help but see it on their face. So asking somebody to describe an emotion means that they get a small dose of that emotion in that moment in time. And how are they feeling now at this point? We've put them in a good place thinking about their happy point. We've asked them how they're gonna feel when they get there. They're now at cloud nine high in terms of happiness. The third part is where we really start to move people. We know that people do not move to become more comfortable even though now they've explained to us the heightened level of comfort they could be at in the future. We know they're guaranteed to move when they're uncomfortable and that's what we make them do right now. We simply ask them the question, what are the consequences of it not working out? At this point of us asking the question about their dream not working out, not becoming reality, their plan being something that isn't gonna be figured out to be the real truth, that's when they stare the monster in the face. That's when they look at how bad could be. And in fact, what they see in their mind's eye at that moment in time is something you could have never explained. And if you did explain it, you'd have been rude and obnoxious. But what they see is something they definitely wanna get away from after just having seen the very thing that they really wanna to move towards and understood how they'd feel when they get to that happy place. Those are the three stages. Asking somebody a plan-based question, how they're gonna feel when they get there, and what happens if it doesn't work out. Has somebody ready to move? It doesn't mean they're gonna buy your thing. It just means that they're in a position where they're prepared to accept a change. 
At this point, you need to be ready to present them a solution that fixes things, but it does come with a health warning. And I need to let you into a secret. Please guys, you cannot use a plan-based question, ask them how they're gonna feel when they get there, and what happens if it doesn't work out, if you don't have a genuine solution for them. You cannot just say, good luck, I hope it works out. You have to be able to say, good news is you're in the right place, and then explain what you can do to help. You don't need tens of reasons why somebody needs to do the thing you want them to do. You just need the one right one. And this three-stage questioning technique helps you find the precise reason that somebody would need to benefit from the thing that you have. So try it. Put it into practice. Watch it work for you. And stop guessing. Start finding the one reason that your customers need you and only you.